Hello and welcome. My name is Salah Omin, GCO of Icon Traders, and welcome to our episode 5 of Rate My Trades. So, in today's episode, what we're going to do is we're going to go through everything or all the updates on Brexit. Delete that. So, in today's episode, what we're going to do is we're going to go through all the updates on Brexit, um, all major events that happened in the markets last week. We're going to look at all the rates my trades. So we're going to look at all the trades that we had open in last week and how they progressed to this week. So all the trade predictions that we had last week and how they progressed. And also trading tips. We're going to give you this week's trading tip, tip of the week. So, starting off with updates on Brexit. So, last week the situation was that uh, Theresa May was going to the EU and she was going to ask them for an extension on Brexit. Now, what's happened since then is the EU had their meeting and they basically said that They've given us an extension on Brexit, so an extension on Article 50, until the 31st of October, so around Halloween time. But before this, before this does happen, so before this date, we can leave the EU. So if Parliament, if the House of Parliament come up with, um, they all agree on a deal before this time and they manage to get the EU to agree on this deal as well, then we will leave before. So basically, still a shambles. Still don't really know what's going on. And me personally, I'm still staying away from the pound for now. Other than that, let's move on. So last week's events. On the 10th of April, we had the US dollar consumer price index release. Now, with this, this shows us the change in average prices of the average basket of goods within an economy. So that means when your mum or whoever in your house goes shopping, the average price of everything that they would have in their basket or trolley or on their tab now that we do this online shopping thing, whatever tickles your fancy, but the average prices. So last week, um, 10th of April it was predicted to be 0.3%, so the 0.3% increase, 0.3% inflation in this rate, you could say. It was actually 0.4%, so it was larger than expected, and this is bad for the economy because if it's bad for the economy, because basically this is meaning that the prices are going up higher than even expected, only by 0.1%, but still has an effect. Now, on the 11th of April, we had the US dollar PPI release. This is from production uh, price index. So with this, it shows us the price of um, everything that's being produced in an economy. Now, last week, this was, uh, and the change in it as well. So for last week, this was predicted to be 0.3%. And the actual amount was 0.6%. So this is almost double the prediction, which is bad for the economy because if prices are going up like that, this shows us that there is inflation. But because these are released every month, month to month, the effects on the price of the dollar is not that great. Moving on, on the 12th of April now, we had the CNY release. Now this shows us the trade balance, the difference between exports and imports within the economy. Now, because we're looking at China in this instance, this figure is quite important because, simply because China produces so much for the world. Now, forecast, it was forecasted to be 7.05 billion, and it was actually 32.65 billion. So that's a massive difference to the prediction and shows that right now China are producing a lot more than people thought. 
since that's the case right now it's looking like the Chinese yen is strengthening it's good for the yen so now we've gone through everything on um, well, all their major events that have affected the markets in a week before now it's that time of the show where we look at my trades and if I know what I'm talking about or not so rate my trades so for this part of the show what we do is we go through all the trades um, all the trades that we were looking at last week and how they progressed so if I actually know what I'm talking about or not and so from last week we had around nine trades that we were looking at and we're just going to go through them so starting off with the USD and Excel this is US dollar Mexican peso now last week if you saw the chart last week and how it's progressed till now, it's going to be shown on the screen, you will see that there has been a massive improvement. So we're still within the parameters. And as I said in last week's episode, this is why it's so important to, if you've got an idea, don't panic when things aren't going your way and rush to close trades early. That's what we didn't do. We didn't write off the US dollar Mexican peso as not um, a trade that we were not interested in but we just saw that it wasn't going in our favor at the time but i knew that we're still in this regression trend so probably hold it out this is still on task to be a good buy and if you're watching now my advice to you would be buy this to a rate around 20.5 moving on ewa usd So since last week, we saw that last week there was some retracement in the market and we're still looking at this to be a good sell. Moving uh, into the 30 minute chart, you can see that the candlesticks have just fallen below the Ichimoku cloud. So that is a perfect entry point for this sell now. And if you saw the chart last week, it's going to be shown on the screen now, you will see that we're still we're still on path with our predictions. Now moving on, we have EUR in ZD. Now with this one, currently if you did open this trade, I did, and uh, now I've had to close it. Um, we can see that there has been some there has been a period of consolidation within this market and it's currently taking us into the day chart so this isn't something that we're looking to buy or sell at this current time and just going to keep watching it for now so if it was to raise um, if it was to rise above around 1.69 then this is the point that we we'll know we need to close this trade but until then we just go and watch it and if it falls properly below the issue movie cloud on the 30 minute chart we're going to look to sell moving on cad chf so with this one if you can see um if you remember how it looked last week in last week's episode that's going to be shown on the screen now you will see that it hasn't really risen that much above where it was last week and as we're looking at this to be a sell, it rising is not good for us. So it's currently going against us, but it's still within our parameters because as you can see, we've drawn out this triangle. So we've got um, a line of resistance and line of support. It's currently still between those. So what we're doing is just, we're going to keep watching this until we can find a good fall to the downside of the Ichimiki cloud and once that happens continue looking to sell this. Moving on, USDCAD. Now this one as well, there has been um, a period, a quite a long period of consolidation in the middle of this uptrend regression trend that we have put in place. So with this now, moving over to the 30 minute chart, 
we can see that the candlesticks, they, there's also been a little regression trend here that the, what's it called, the candlesticks have been bouncing between the, this period for quite some time. So what we're looking at now is if the candlesticks are to rise above, um, above the level of 1.34, that's the point we're going to continue buying this uh, USDCAD. But until that point, just got to keep watching it. And once we do continue buying it, we'll have our take profit of a level of around 1.36. Now moving on, EYAD. We can say it again this week, this is the day chart, moving into the 30 minute chart as well. We can see it's fallen nicely below our Ichimuki cloud. So, once again, I know what I'm talking about. Iwa and OK. Now, last week, what we said on this one is we were to close it because this was originally a buy and it was going against our favor. So, since then, if you move into the 30 minute chart, if you remember how this looked from last week, you will see that it dropped below. Since then, it came up, tested our old support line, which is now a line of resistance. And you can see the price did resist, price is above here in this case, and now went back and fell to the downside of the Ichimuki cloud. So from this point now, we can see that it is everything's in track for a sell of our new take profit of around 9.43. Moving on, natural gas. So if you remember from the last time we looked at natural gas here on the um, regular trade, you will see everything is going perfectly according to plan. Um, falling nicely to the downside, heading towards that level of two which is our take profit. Now, if you've got any savings, any savings, doing nothing, you're not doing anything with the money and you're watching this at this point, I'd say you're a very lucky person because you have the opportunity to make a lot of money. If you were to take this trade, um, open a sell position or long position um, with a take profit of two, you're laughing. You're just laughing. Moving on. Gold. Once again, last week, if you remember how um, the chart for gold looked last week, it's going to come up on the screen now. You will see that everything's going perfectly according to plan. I might as well be a psychic. I might as well see into the future because this is exactly what I said would happen. And yeah, moving on. So now, what we're going to do is, in this series, every week, um, we are now going to start giving you a trading tip a week. This week's trading tip, we're going to look at gold and silver. Now, as you can see, we predicted the sell on gold, and gold is going perfectly, but, on the screen right now, you'll be able to see that with gold and silver, they often tend to um, copy each other. So as you can see here, so for the past period of um, 56 days, if you move over here on the week chart of silver as well, we can see that the past 56 days has also had a downtrend. So the same pattern for silver and gold often copies each other. Now you need to bear in mind and remember that they don't copy each other exactly because if they did then you would see that the low on silver would be the lowest low in this region here and as it is in gold. However, that's not the case. But if you zoom out to see the general trend on silver and zoom out to see the general trend on gold, you'll see that they do copy each other. Now, 
If you would like to test this strategy, then you can go back and back test it yourself and you'll see that I am correct. So you are welcome. Now, moving on, that is all we have today in um, today's episode of Rate My Trade. If you would like to go through, please feel free, go back and check all the trades that we've gone through and place them yourself on your own um, accounts, then feel free. There's some free money there for you. And yeah, what are you still doing watching this video? Go do something with your life. Have a nice day.